it's so much fun to read about artists and especially stories about their life where it's kind of a fun fictional version, but it's based on a true story. And this one that I'm going to read today is Picasso and the Girl with the Ponytail. And in case you don't know about Picasso, he is a very famous Spanish painter. He also was a printmaker and a sculptor and did ceramics. So he did a lot of amazing things, but he's known for a very unusual kind of art, cubism, that he became famous for. And he spent most of his life in France, but he is of Spanish origin. And so I'm going to read the story about, a, based on a true story, the girl with the ponytail. And you can see that's kind of a comic version of him right there. This book is written by Lawrence Ann Holt, and the pictures are wonderful. It was the first day of summer. Sylvette and her friends were sitting on the terrace in the sun. Sylvette was so shy that she always sat a little apart, but she listened to every word. Have you heard? Picasso is staying right here in Valoris. It's incredible, the most famous artist in the world. Every picture he paints is worth a fortune. I heard he has a huge white car sent from America in exchange for just one painting. Sylvette was very interested. Secretly, she dreamed of becoming an artist herself. In a suitcase under her bed was a sketchbook full of her drawings. All her secrets were locked inside that suitcase, things no one else had ever seen. Suddenly, Sylvette noticed something absolutely amazing. Right in front of her eyes, a beautiful picture had appeared above the terrace wall. Look, shouted her friends, it's Sylvette. Only Sylvette has a ponytail like that. Only Sylvette has a ponytail like that. Sylvette hid her face in her hands. She heard a roar of laughter from behind the wall. They all ran to look. They saw a man holding the picture above his head. He was short, but very muscular. He wore a striped shirt, shorts, and a pair of bedroom slippers. It was Picasso. I saw you all from my studio, he laughed, and I made a sketch. Come on, why don't you come visit me? Can you imagine? Sylvette was the last inside the door, her heart beating like a drum. The studio was a treasure house, as if the artist had never thrown away a single thing. Every surface was piled with bits and pieces, tins of paint, scraps of wood, strange sculptures, children's toys, broken pots, a cowboy hat, flowers, painted plates, a boomerang, fish bones, a clown's mask, a birdcage, guitars, a bullfighter's sword, and more than anything else, Sylvette saw paintings, hundreds and hundreds of them, each one signed with a single word, Picasso. That's his famous signature. Now, wouldn't it be fun if you had this book, you could look and see which of those things you could find. But to really be there in person, wow. And to see all of those fun objects that he used to paint. Picasso was still laughing. He was 73 years old, but he acted like he was a young boy. Now then, he shouted, I will draw one person. Who will it be? One of Sylvette's, Sylvette's friends stepped forward quickly. She was very beautiful. You can draw me, Mr. Picasso, she said. I will sit for you. Picasso looked at her quite fiercely. No, he said. You saw my picture outside. I've chosen the girl with the ponytail. Sylvette felt a bit sick. She wanted to run straight out the door, but Picasso was very kind. It's all right, he said gently. You can trust me. Come and sit down. Sylvette is too shy, teased her friends, and too dreamy as well. That's good, laughed the artist. Then we will get along, because Picasso is a dreamer too. Come back another time, he calls to Sylvette's friends. Sylvette and I have work to do. Picasso looked carefully at Sylvette. She was shivering. Here, borrow this coat, he said. Then he began to draw. The first drawing was slow and careful, a delicate pencil study. 
then look, this is how he does. You can see how he changes. Then the second picture was larger. Sylvette, as, as still and nervous as a wild deer, he captured her in that picture. Then Picasso began to work faster and faster. The pictures grew larger and more strange. Picasso was enjoying himself. Now look at this one. He's known for very strange pictures, okay? At the end of the day, Sylvette ran home. She took out her sketchbook, but her head was spinning and none of her drawings came right. The next morning, Sylvette returned nervously to the studio. Perhaps Picasso had forgotten her, but he opened the door and grinned at her like a schoolboy. Little by little, the paintings became more daring and more extraordinary. Little by little, Sylvette became less shy. Picasso seemed to change every moment, just like his pictures. He was as proud as a king. He painted like a magician, and yet he liked to dress up and play games. Sometimes he put on funny hats or masks to make Sylvette laugh. He told her about the animals he had owned, dogs, a goat who was allowed to sleep indoors, and a bad-tempered monkey. Once he had even kept an owl. Of course, Picasso had painted them all. And if you look carefully in this picture, you can see all these animals that he has painted. This is a fantastic picture. You need to get this book to look at from the library. All through the summer, Picasso created pictures of Sylvette and sculptures in cardboard and metal. As the work became bigger and bolder, she became braver too. Sylvette's father had left home when she was small, but for that summer, Picasso was like a father to her. Shy Sylvette, Sylvette was the most famous painter with the most famous painter in the world. It was a real fairy tale. And there she is. One day, Sylvette plucked up her courage and showed Picasso her own sketchbook. She told him about her dream of becoming an artist. Picasso didn't laugh at, at, or tease her about it. That is good, he said loudly but you have to be brave and learn and, and learn to let go. Look at me. When I'm angry, I make angry pictures. You see this? And when I'm sad, my pictures are sad. But when I'm happy, my paintings are full of joy. Even my dreams are in my work. There can be no secrets in painting. That afternoon, a photographer came to the studio. Sylvette hated having her photo taken. She wanted to hide. Then she saw Picasso making funny faces at the camera, and suddenly it didn't seem so bad. The man took dozens of pictures of Picasso and, and Sylvette beside the paintings. Her friends couldn't believe their eyes. Shy Sylvette on the cover of a famous magazine? She probably had no idea that's what those pictures were for. And before long, every magazine wanted a picture of Picasso's new model. Girls in Paris and London were even copying her hairstyle. They all wanted a Sylvette ponytail. Sylvette cut out all the photographs and locked them carefully in her suitcase. Sometimes Picasso worked late into the night. Once, Sylvette saw him behind the studio in the middle of a pile of garbage, her hunting for interesting objects. The richest artist who ever lived made sculptures from old junk. Sylvette had seen some of them in magazines, a baboon with two toy cars for a face, a bull's head made from a bicycle seat and handlebars. Sylvette loved watching Picasso work. Paintings, sculptures, pots poured from him like a volcano. At last, Picasso started a huge sculpture of Sylvette with old pieces of pottery for the arms and legs. It had a long neck and a round ba bag just like hers, but the head was so strange, Sylvette didn't think it looked like her at all. As she watched, Sylvette had a sad feeling that this would be the last time Picasso would use her for his model. Since the day on the terrace, she had been in his work. Soon it would all fade like the summer.
While Picasso worked, Sylvette began telling her, him her secrets. She talked about the time her father had gone away. Sylvette kept a special picture of him in her suitcase, but she had never told anyone how hurt and lonely she had been. Picasso looked up at her with burning black eyes. It is very hard when people move apart, he said, but try to remember with ev when every door that closes, a new door opens. It began to grow dark. As they looked at the sculpture, Sylvette, Sylvette told Picasso a secret she had locked away and tried to forget. She talked about the man who had come to live with her mother, a loud, unpleasant bully. Sylvette was sometimes so unhappy that she wanted to run away. Picasso looked at her kindly. Then he jumped up. You have given me an idea, he said. I knew something was missing from the sculpture. Sylvette must hold something in her hand. This is amazing. Picasso began searching through his pieces on a table. He tipped out a drawer onto the floor. At last, he found what he wanted. In her hands, Picasso announced, Sylvette holds a key. He pushed a big iron key into the hand of the sculpture. Sylvette looked puzzled. She has a key because she has so many secrets locked away. Picasso fixed the key in place with some plaster. But she also has a key, listen, Sylvette, to open new doors. Then Picasso reached out his hand, white with plaster, and gently touched Sylvette's face. Look, it is finished, the girl with a key. Now, Sylvette, I would like to give you a present. You may choose any picture of mine you like. Perhaps it will help to open some doors for you. When Sylvette stepped out of Picasso's studio for the last time, she was carrying that very first picture. She held it carefully because the paint on the signature was not quite dry. For Sylvette from Picasso, a beautiful picture of the girl with a ponytail. After that summer, Sylvette began to paint as bravely as Picasso had taught her. Gradually, she became a well-known artist herself. When the picture Picasso gave her was sold, Sylvette had enough money to pay for a beautiful apartment of her very own with space for a real studio high on the top floor with views across the whole of Paris. Sylvette ran up the stairs. She turned the key and opened the door. And that's a truth based on a true story of someone that he used as a model. And that's an interesting story. Now, nowadays, that was a long time ago. But nowadays, you wouldn't go in with somebody strange like that without uh, your parents going with you. But this was a long time ago. And Things were different back then, and he certainly was a unique person. You need to look at his some of his work because you saw that that sculpture that he did of her. It was the weirdest thing you've ever seen, but it's a kind of art that appeals to a lot of people. And he has a variety of, like I said, he's got um, ceramics, metal, um, um, oil paintings, all kind of things. So a very interesting um, artist and one everybody needs to hear about at some point. I hope you have a great day.